Saturday Social is powered by EA Sports FIFA 23 with PlayStation. Let's crack on with the predictions then. Let's because do it. We asked our guests to predict a number of different categories. We're going to start mm. at the top of the league with champions and top four. They didn't go other, did they? They didn't go <laughs> other, thankfully. But we've got Rory and Theo both saying Man City are going to win the league and very, very similar top fours. Mm. Interestingly, though, Rory... You're less confident about Chelsea than Theo is. Hang on, can I just pick up on Rory here? He's gone Tottenham to finish above Chelsea, and now you're a beloved Chelsea <laughs> fan. Yeah. You'd make no mistake that you don't particularly love Tottenham. Are you scared of what I'm no, saying? No, no, I, 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 I will be totally frank with you, Smithy. You're a dear friend, but I have a lot of antipathy towards Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. But I do think that they are borderline sensational, and I think Antonio Conte is outrageously good. I think there is a world where Tottenham could finish above Liverpool. I don't think they can win no, the league. I don't Rory. think they can change the league. 20 there points is, behind they finished last yeah, year. Yeah, of course. They, they, they weren't the same team last year. Antonio Conte, what I will never do... Antonio Conte is the second best manager I've ever seen at Chelsea. He is outrageously good. His, he is. His yeah. track yeah, record is. of taking teams from mediocre... He took, took Chelsea from 10th to top. Yeah. He, he took, he took Juve, well. Juve yeah. took them back. Started the era of Juve dominance, ended the era of Juve dominance. Antonio Conte's mm. name needs to be mentioned among the very best that have ever done it in this league. And for that reason alone, I'm not back in Tottenham. Far from it. I never would. But I can't, I can't see a world where Antonio Conte doesn't have a really good season. I'm quite interested that neither of you have put Arsenal in there. Mm. Is mm. that out of blind faith to Chelsea? Or are you just thinking to yourself that maybe Arsenal don't have enough to get in there? I think that Arsenal have a really good squad. I think they've had a brilliant window. I think you could make a yeah, case for yeah. some of Jesus their single is signing. Great signing. Jesus, Jesus is arguably great signing of the summer. I think he's a brilliant signing. He mm. gives Arteta what Arteta needs. Arteta likes the idea of playing that kind of front four, effervescent front four that all yeah. interchange. And nobody has to score 30 goals because they all score a dozen. You can't do that with Lacazette. So the, mm. the upgrade from Lacazette to, um, to Gabriel Jesus, who will run the channels, mm. constantly press, constantly offer so much for his team, it changes everything. So Arsenal are a threat. My issue with Arsenal, and the reason why I haven't put them quite as high as everybody else, I think the team are great. I, re I respect the institution that is Arsenal Football Club. I'm just not having Arteta. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. <laughs> everybody <laughs> thinks he's brilliant, and I just think he is distinctly average. Rory, he's brilliant. Uh, have what you, are you, not, have you not like Arteta? Because it's, Have you not watched All or Nothing? I mean, partly, yes, I have. And that is another conversation and another reason why I think that it may all be a myth. But, you know, this thing that he's doing, this process, <laughs> this thing that he's working on, it's all totally unquantifiable. Like, but it's a process. What does that even I mean? I think they've, 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 they've got much better. Yeah. But the, do, you know what else, do you know what else the narrative is? And this is what I don't agree with. People always say the improvement. The improvement since he's taken over. When he took over, Unai, he took over from Emery. Emery had Chelsea and Arsenal neck and neck. Chelsea finished fourth, Arsenal finished fifth. Chelsea and Arsenal were in the same European, European final. final yeah. yeah, Chelsea slapped them up in Baku, that was fine. <laughs> but ultimately, we got to the same final. So Chelsea and Arsenal pretty much neck and neck that year. Arsenal finished fifth, Chelsea won the European Cup the year after. Do you know, like... But do you know why? Thomas Tuchel. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant but, manager. And, and, and Mikel Arteta. Arteta has clearly turned it round at Arsenal. No manager has able to keep the ship. And he's gone there, he's developed players, and now they're going into a season. I predicted them just outside the top four, but I think it's going to go right down to the very last week. And Arteta's more of a project, like you said, long-term manager. If he brings it round, if he turns this around, similar to what Wenger did, he needs time. It's not going to all happen in the instant season. I tell you what, he'll bring in trophies and he'll be loved by fans. He was an Arsenal captain and he's going to bring success to that club. I think you're in a little bit rude, Rory. It's, it's, it's not rude. I just don't... I haven't seen anything. It's not tangible. You know, if you, if you talk about Antonio Conte being a great manager, you yeah. look at the track record, you look at the trophies, you look at... But he's more short-term. He gets that instant success. Arteta's changing the whole dynamic of the football club. But this, this, that's something that's unquant unquantifiable. What do you yeah. mean? What does that mean? He changes the whole mean. dynamic of the football club. That's just words to but me. Conte will never means. stay for a few years he's going to win trophies and move on. And actually, he'll leave it in a position where the club will go backwards in the future. I mean, that's not necessarily the case, though, is it? You say that he will win trophies and the club goes backwards. That isn't necessarily the case. In two years at Chelsea, in his first year, he so took Chelsea from 10th to top. Who took, Chelsea won the who league. Chelsea over after? Chelsea won the league. In the second year, when everybody will tell you, oh, it went so bad, it was a terrible season following Chelsea, Chelsea won the FA Cup. We beat Manchester United in the final. Chelsea you beat the Jose Mourinho in the fifth. Fifth. It's not, it's not winning the league. Fifth. Fifth. No, it's fifth in a cup, though. I mean, who do people think we are? It's a, that's a really good season. So I think... A really good season. What? Fifth, outside top four and the cup. 
for Chelsea I, Football Club. I don't Club. live in a world where we can sneer at silverware, Theo. I think if you win silverware, going to Wembley, beating Manchester United in a final at Wembley is always a good day. That is a significant season. But with Arteta, I just... I just don't see it. And you know when you say things to me, he's changing the entire culture of the club. He's changing the entire dynamic. These are just words. These mm. aren't things that I can actually appreciate. OK, so I think it's fair to say they disagree. Great start in the vein, lads. Yeah, good start in the vein. Great for the show. Uh, worth pointing out, you did say both said Man City. Uh, I've, I've tipped Man City. Yeah. The league. What have you gone for? Yeah, You've gone City, Man City yeah. as well. So all in agreement, you think City uh, with the league. Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, and this is overachievers and underachievers. This is, again, teams we're focusing on before we get into individual players. Uh, Theo, let's go to you first. You've gone Palace yep. overachievers and Leicester underachievers. So just explain those two, would you? Yeah, I think they'll make top 10 for the first season since 2014-15. I have strong belief that Crystal Palace, especially with the new five sub rule, they've got amazing depth in the winger positions, loads of forwards. Obviously, we can't base it off one game. It was uninspiring, that 1-0 loss to Arsenal. But I have a strong feeling they're going to turn this around. Their pre-season was... It was hinted by the fact that half the team went to Australia and the other stayed in England. So they only had one pre-season match. I think they will kick on. And I fully believe in Vieira. I, I, he's such a good man management gaffer. He's got his tactic spot on last year. And I, I think you've lost Conor Gallagher. Once they understand a tactic where they make the midfield have a bit, bit of a better understanding, they'll kick on. So okay. why Leicester yeah. then? What, Leicester in the underachievers. 2 no last signing. night. Yeah, Two Leicester. Last night, Arsenal. Yeah. You give, you're giving them a disservice there. Oh, yeah, sorry. 1-0. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've, I've had a so, bit of a So Le there. Leicester, yeah, no Leicester. signings. Potentially losing for Fana. Potentially yeah. losing James Madison. That's the problem. I think lost if they Cash lose most of their key players... It's going to be very difficult to keep mm. around seventh. I've predicted that, but I feel as if they're going to fall away. You if they predicted lose Leicester seventh? No, my, my, my dad did. I, I put them in the seventh to ninth range. OK. okay. I, what do you think? I think that would be a great yeah. finish for Leicester, given the summer they've had, the yeah, transition tough, they've gone, gone through, mm. and without any And what signings. still might happen as well. And, of course, there's still players that are, that are currently there that yeah. are linked to the moves as well. You've um, gone for Man United, haven't you? You've gone you? Man United... Achievers. Underachievers. Yeah. So do you want to just explain yeah. that while yeah. Joe is sat next to me yeah. with his head um, in his hands? With, with joy. <laughs> um, the reason why I've gone Manchester United is because I totally respect the, the institution, the footballing institution mm. that is Manchester United. And because of who they are, because of what they represent, because of their history, what they need to be doing is winning silverware. And what they need to be doing at the very least is challenging for silverware. And because I can't see a world where that happens on any front this year, I can't see Manchester United qualifying for Europe if you count that as success. I can't see Manchester United winning any silverware at all. That is therefore underachievement. Do you think that, though, to some level potentially helps Eric Ten Hag a little bit? Because it feels like everybody's written Man United off yeah, already. It it's like there's no pressure, yeah, really, definitely. is there? Expect uh, expectations naturally shift. And I think Eric Ten Hag will benefit from the fact that expectations have mm. perhaps never been lower at Manchester United they in have, my lifetime. Yeah. So mm. he could benefit from that. I think whatever happens this season, Eric Ten Hag is safe. And, it sh and so he should be. Yeah, Eric Ten Hag is, is safe. He needs, yeah. to be given, he needs to be given that time. But when I think about Manchester United and what that name represents to me, like, mm. you know, when I think about Manchester United, when I think about, say, the captain's armband, yeah. for me, that's, that's Brian Robson, that's Eric Cantona, that's Roy Keane, it's Wayne Rooney, it's, it's the elite. <sighs> I'm talking about underachieving. It's, it's Harry Maguire. He's weighed down by that captain's armband. And therefore, whatever happens this season, it's underachieving because of the institution that they are. Did you expect Man United to do more in the transfer? Obviously, the transfer window is still open, yes. but obviously, yeah. in terms of how long it's taken to get deals over the line, new manager coming, did you think? I think a lot of people, or the United fans, thought that more would be done. Would, would you be agreeing with that, Theo? You can ask Joe. He's a Manchester United fan, yeah. and, he, and he's yeah. staring at me. He's gutted. Yeah. I Look think Eric Ten Hag would have been expecting more business. Particularly how, yeah. how quickly a lot of other clubs are doing business. Tottenham, Arsenal. There's a lot of mm. a lot of movement from a lot you, of the you other clubs. Look club at your, that Manchester United squad well. last last season, and it really struggled. Mm. It, it, it's lost a lot of players. You know, pogba has gone, Lingard's gone. Matter's gone, Matic has gone. Yeah. Um, but none of them really last season. They made a massive they're, they're not difference. Edison Cavani, but it's squad depth, isn't mm. it? It's, it it's, you're losing six players, you've mm. not replaced them, and also the signings that you've been key targeting, you know, Frankie De Jong, that's probably the a forward, that's appalling. hasn't got over the line. That's, yeah. the, that's the appalling one, the De Jong one. Partly the conduct of Manchester United like taking so long, and I appreciate that there's issues with Barcelona, but you know what Manchester United need to do now? They need to pull out, they need to have a principle. The way that Frankie De Jong has disrespected them, the way that Frankie De Jong has spoken about Manchester Manchester as a city. When you sign for a club, you're buying into a people and an Culture. ethic and a city. Mm. And he doesn't want to, he's got only disrespect for the city of Manchester. And as a result, like Manchester is an iconic city and it's a privilege to walk out with the Stretford and singing your name behind you. Who does the geezer think he is? Manchester United say absolutely not. We're not after you anymore. Where's the principle?
Right, Chelsea should... link with him though, so if he comes to Chelsea, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> great, player. Yeah, yeah. great player, I love, I love it. Love it. Uh, just quickly, yeah. Roy went with Nottingham Forest. Interesting for his overachievers. Twelve new signings, close to 100 million pound yeah. outlay. But we've got to move on. Yeah, we've got to move on to our relegation battle. Mm. The last sort of teams prediction we've got, and again, quite similar. Both of you going for Bournemouth and Leeds to go down. That is a disgrace. A slight disagreement on Fulham and Brentford. What's a disgrace? This here? is awful. Brentford 19th. Yes. You have lost it. No. <laughs> you have lost it. Do you understand no. the way that football club is run yes. and where they finished last season? Yes. And the signings they made, Aaron Hickey, Damsgaard. Yes, yes. This is the problem, Rory. You know the iconic names, but the ones that come in and absolutely shine in the Premier League that you wouldn't have heard of, I'm telling you, Thomas Frank will not get relegated, especially with Ivan Tony up top. He'll score... But they were struggling really badly before and Christian, Christian Eriksen arrived. Christian Eriksen saved okay, them. fine. Christian Eriksen, Christian saved, Eriksen them. saved them. One goal, four assists. That's Take huge that. for them. Five goal involvements in five goal 12 involvements. games or whatever he was involved in. And now in they've got damage. They've, they've, they've got a replacement. They've, they've, they've got the link up between Ericsson and Tony as well when yes. he came in. You did see the way they played. It didn't make I'm, a big difference I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that he didn't make a difference. He did. Do you know what that but is? But they're going to kick it's on. It's the youth of today. That is representative of the youth of today. Shouting stats out without actually appreciating the full value of the game. I do. Stats, stats tell a, a, a select Rory, portion of the story. But Brentford 19. One, one goal, four assists. That doesn't tell, that doesn't so tell the full story <laughs> of, of his contribution to that club. That, his contribution to that club, you can't quantify it. You can't, how do you quantify spirit? How do you quantify heart? How do you quantify leadership? You can't do that with your heat map. <laughs> how do you quantify? How do you quantify <laughs> Brentford going down? Because Brent, Brentford, I, I called it with Sheffield United as well. I just think that Brentford are at the very best, in, in a very generous way, a championship club. And sometimes you revert to what you naturally are. And I think that they had a brilliant season last year. They did very well to stay up. But ultimately, normal service will be resumed. We, we'll we'll lose you, the Ericsson yeah, heat map then. Neither have, you, <laughs> neither have you got Everton in there either, interestingly. And they were right involved last... It feels oh, like they've got dear. worse this, this, this season as well. They've lost their best player in, in, in Richarlison. Dominic Calvert-Lewin's Calvert out well. for the start of the season. Yeah, they've got a wonderful manager, though. They do. Frank Lampard. And also, great fans. <laughs> I think that, that place, I think they're, they're, it was the fans more, that kept them safe last year. I think they're closer to the drop for me than Brentford. But I don't, I don't know. I think I don't, so, yeah. Both got Leeds interesting. It's interesting hearing the quotes, wasn't it? We saw, we spoke yeah. about it is impossible that, to the word impossible to used when the owner was Andrea talking about um, yeah, Leeds United. So it'll be interesting wow. to see. Fascinating to see how the relegation battle unfolds. But we're going to move it on to players now. Yes. Um, so we, we set you the task of picking a couple more player related categories. We're going to have a look at what you picked for this one. Um, so, best transfer firstly. Now, you've both gone for Chelsea players. Uh, Raheem Sterling, Rory, and Koulibaly, Dogden. So, yep. uh, Koulibaly, that, that surprises you, Joe, a little bit, it that does. one? Yeah. Joe, okay. I, know, I know you're roasting me off air. <laughs> I've, I've full belief Koulibaly's going to come in and signing. surprise a few people. He's 31 years old. People are saying his age has passed it. He's come in. Not many people are talking about it. People are looking at the bigger prices, the, the high flyers going around. But for 30 million... You're getting a 31-year-old. He's probably got a good five years in him. We've seen with Thiago mm. Silva, you can smash it when you're a lot older. If you ask any Napoli fan, he is consistent and he held that back line together. I know, Joe, you may bring up that one game where they faced an English team in Europe. Not I'm two, not just bringing up that. I, I'm, two, just saying oh, that at least. I'm just saying that at, at 31, I think it's a big ask to come in and fill Antonio Rudiger's boots, who was p potentially one of the best Premier League yeah. centre-backs last season. season yeah. Worked perfectly in a Thomas Tuchel system. I mean, you're a Chelsea fan. I, I, I don't think that Koulibaly is at Rudiger's level. No, I think that the, the, Koulibaly, the Koulibaly signing is, is a very good one. It's a very astute move. But it's only rectifying a problem that was self-inflicted. If we'd given Rudiger the money that yeah. he wanted, we would have been in profit because we've had to spend more overall on Koulibaly and we would have a player that is Tuchel proven, Premier League proven and popular in the Chelsea dressing room. Mm. So, yes, we've rectified a problem, but it's a problem that was self-inflicted. So on mm. Joe's point, though, you were saying that as a Chelsea fan, you'd rather have kept Rudiger yeah, than, than bought in Koulibaly. Of course, because there's no jeopardy. And he, there's I think no he's, jeopardy I think with Rudiger. fine signing, but best signing of the window. Like yeah. Sterling, I think, is, is, a ca is more yeah. of a candidate. St I think Sterling... I've gone for Sterling because I'm so happy that we've signed him. I think it's a brilliant signing yeah. for us. Mm. It elevates our front line. Are you surprised line. Man City let him go? When you look at his numbers... They consistently, did. not just for Man City, but for England as well. But he only had a year left, Important didn't Important player. Arguably, yes, he did. I think he would have contract, signed, But in terms though. of the numbers that he puts up, yes. are you surprised City let him go? Look, he immediately becomes Chelsea's best attacker. He immediately becomes the best mm. player in our squad. So for that reason alone, it's a, it's a really, really solid signing for us. I'm very surprised that City let him go, but I think they wanted to sign him. I think Guardiola had offered him a contract. He just couldn't guarantee him the game time, and Sterling wanted those promises. So Sterling signing for Chelsea is huge. It elevates everything. If you think about the comparison, Timo Werner to 
Raheem Sterling. Mm. It's chalk and cheese. He guarantees goals. And to demonstrate how important these goals are, last season, Chelsea's top goal scorer was Mason Mount with 11. Mm. The season before, Jorginho with eight. So, Mace, uh, so Raheem Sterling coming in, who is going to score a minimum of 14, be our top goal scorer. It's a fantastic signing. But we do have to just give an honourable mention here. I think Gabriel Jesus at Arsenal deserves a shout-out. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a fa fantastic. And I think with Jesus as well, what's great about him is I think he's also got a point to prove. Or not, mm. not, not to viewers, but I think he would, must have looked at last season when Man City often played with a false nine over him who, who plays mm. as a number nine. And he must have been thinking, well, there's big games I'm not being played for. And then he comes on and scores four goals in some games. Must be, it must so be he, he must be thinking to get regular first team must be a huge attraction for him. Totally. And he'll start all the time for Arsenal. It's well, when they did it. Do you remember when they started yeah. playing Ferran Torres? Do you remember when they started playing Ferran Torres through the middle and pushing him yeah. out they played, wide? They, played, they yeah. played an array of in people that, in that In that one, moment, he must have just thought, this is ridiculous. I would be starting up front for virtually any other team mm. in the world mm. and yet I'm being pushed and out And he looked here. great last night. Yeah, he's a brilliant player. He was you know, solid, yeah. Before, we, before he signed for City, I put a video on my YouTube channel where I basically begged Chelsea to hijack the signing I remember. from Arsenal. Yeah, I, I just begged, yeah, I just, yeah. I just put, put an open letter out to the board <laughs> going, please they sign Jesus. Listen. They what didn't they listen. I was, I was rudely ignored. Uh, we're going to move it on because I'm quite looking forward to this section yes. because you, we, we asked you to pick a flop transfer, both of you. Now, a name that Rory's picked is going to jump off the no. page. No. Now, Thompson has gone with uh, Phillips, as you can see there. Come Phillips. But Rory yeah. has gone with, yeah, Calvin Phillips. Rory, you've gone with Haaland. I don't need to ask a question, just explain mm. the reasoning behind that one because Theo's face is a picture. Erling Haaland will not live up to the expectation. I am so bored. Why, Why won't he? Because, because, he isn't, because he isn't the player that everybody thinks he is. People are saying that he's going to win the Golden Boot. That is outrageous. It's so disrespectful to the establishment. Why is that outrageous? It's so disrespectful to the establishment. Being the city the most, striker. The Mo Salah. The Mo Salahs of the world. The, the Harry Kanes of the world. The Hummin Sons of the world. Give them the respect to turn up in a new league and win the Golden Boot. That would be a ridiculous achievement and he isn't going to do it. He's profligate. He's, he's, he's very profligate. He's wasteful in front of goal at times. Ooh. He's filled up play. Ooh. His build-up play isn't isn't good Can't enough at the moment. This. His build-up play isn't good enough at the moment to play in a City team. The way that Man City he's up top game, for City. He's going to score goals. He's proven it at Dortmund. No, no, that's he can score hat tricks in twenty minutes. It's Erling Braut Haaland we're talking about, <laughs> and Manchester City <laughs> football him. club, Full the name. team more than anyone else has amazing depth, can create chances for him. It's. I don't think we're two... arguing on the same thing though. Will he score goals? Yes. So how, many goals? how many goals? Will is he success? We are arguing Erling the same thing. I'll tell you what, we're not. He's going to be the Golden Boot winner. He's going to prove you wrong. Okay, okay I, will so take, goals, I will take that back. How many <laughs> goals is, is he going to score this season? I think, I think he'll do really well to score... If he scores 15, it would be a really good season for him. <gasps> yeah. That's it, I'm yeah, done. 15 he, goals. How many do you think he's going to score? He's scoring 20-plus. If he stays fit, this is, the big, this is the big thing, and Rory hasn't mentioned it yet. He's very injury-prone. Last season for Dortmund, he got injured and he only scored... 20 plus 20 contributions. I take this. Uh, here we go. Every time I bring up goals jeopardy. and assists, Rory's going to be he's like, 22 oh, but season. you can't count goals and assists. Look at this young generation. <laughs> he's oh, looking oh, straight the down the camera yeah, for that. getting the heat maps out. <laughs> I'm <laughs> looking down the camera there because this is joke. Jeopardy. I, I don't know what to mention anymore because Rory will be so, like, oh, Smithy, goals don't you count. You need to do something about this. Okay, I reckon I reckon you two should have a bet here. Yeah, I 20 pounds. You're over 20, you're under 20. Yes, De oh, under it. 20, deal, okay. okay but what's, no, what's no, 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 you no, backed it, got, you got backed it. Cut point. He says 15. No, no, you I backed say, it, so under 20. Under 20, uh, under 20. So, so, so shake on it now, uh, full fit season. No, 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 it's no caveat. Part no, because of the part reason, of your argument part wasn't the injury. Part I said, part Leo, of, get on with it, shake no, his hand. Part, part of it is the fact that okay. his injury record is an issue as well. I, I, yeah, I think what's surprising is that people will debate how many goals he will score. Great. Obviously, it's a new system. But I think what's surprising is because of flop transfer, yeah. you're singling him out as, as the, the worst transfer, the flop transfer of all of the transfers. Because of, because and he's of, a marquee signing. Because, so I think that's why people are surprised. Yeah, because of where name. it's been set. Because of the way that people are talking about him. He will flop the most from the expectation that is put upon him. And you went Phillips? I went Phillips. You know what? I, I found it difficult this season to work out who is going to be the, the flop of the season. And he's definitely not going to flop. I think he could be an underachiever depending on his injury status last year with Leeds. And also the squad rotation when a holding midfielder doesn't get to play every week. It's very different to playing at Leeds where you know you're guaranteed 90 minutes. So, yeah, look, I think he'll do well for England in Qatar. Lots I, of caveats going on yeah. here, yeah. giving you putting him in flop transfer. Yeah, because all these new signings, I think Raheem Sterling will do well. I think Koulibaly... You're going to fall most... off that fence any minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not going to fall off. I really am. I'm, 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 I'm hyped up because I can't believe you said Haaland. It's really made me think about really everything. Quite Should we go to the final predictions? Because there's one. another big shout in here. Go on, then there? let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the final predictions as well then. Player of the season, Rory has gone Mount. Theo's gone Kane. And Mount! Then, uh, Mount. That's the one See, I'm most Rory, confident about. There's literally no jeopardy there. Player of the season. We're Player. talking 20 clubs. Number one, Mason Mount. 
in the You've bag. just said that Chelsea will scrape top four <laughs> and you think Mason Mount is going to be the, the king it, of the Premier it, League. He'll be the reason why. Even with he'll a distraction of Qatar where he'll Mount is going to play every week. Oh, it's okay. So, hold on. Is he going to be the best player in the World Cup as well? Yeah. Is he... <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> is this... <laughs> Mason Mount's a sensational footballer. He's a sensational I think footballer you love him. who gets massively disrespected. I don't quite understand yeah, why. top player. But the thing yeah. is, if Chelsea player. have a really good season... Is it not a Raheem Sterling or a goal scorer that, that picks up the awards at Chelsea? Does Mount, does Mount almost just fly under the radar just because of the role he plays? I think it? this will be the year that people finally appreciate what Chelsea fans have been appreciating and Chelsea mm. managers have been appreciating for a, a long time. he's a great player. But top player, yeah. And, and he's great season last season. You pointed great out, season, top, top goal scorer at Chelsea last season. But yeah. people generally wouldn't know that. Yeah, with yeah. 11 goals, mm. though. But you're putting him as, as the player of the season. He will be the if player. If Kane scores 25 goals, do we really think Mount is going to pick up player of the season scoring 12? There you go. You've gone Kane. Score more than And that. the reason I've gone Harry Kane, <laughs> it's very simple. They brought in Richarlison. They got Kulusevski. They got Hyung min Son. And with the new five sub rule, mm. the depth they have in forward positions, Kane doesn't even need to be that nine consistently yeah. to be the best player in this league. He can drop back, get assists, link in play. Perisic's on the wing. Bang. Uh, Smithy, you're a Tottenham <laughs> fan. You're going to enjoy it. Please tell me you've got a season ticket I, this year. I, I, I'm going to enjoy that. I'll be going to many games this season. Yes, you're right. And I do think you're right about that. Actually. I think a lot of times in the past, Harry Kane has had to play so many minutes and been rushed back from injury because of the lack of depth in, in other options. Whereas I do think now you've got a lot of options that mm. if he is carrying a knot, we don't need to rush him back. Or he can play further deep and Richardson can play as a nine or you've got wider options with Kulusevski and Mora yeah. as well. So I think that is going to benefit Harry a lot. And if he stays injury-free, I do expect him to score a lot of goals. Uh, and you've gone Kane and Haaland for Golden Boot. So it rounds us off nicely. Given the Haaland, Haaland, Haaland debate we've already had, how yeah, many does Kane get this season then in that Kane front line? Kane does not win the Golden Boot. They've got three forward attacking options who will finish play. Son, Kulusevski, Richarlison. He will be more of a creator. I think he'll get over more 20 contributions, maybe 10 goals, 15 assists. 10 last. goals? Do you think Kane's get 10 goals this season? How many last season? Do you think he played he last year? Ten goals. Depends season. on injuries. Of course, he's on penalties. Okay, like, fine. He scored seventeen Premier League goals last 14, year. 14 no, goals. No, 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 you can't do that. Hang on a minute. He's, I can. I can you nailed your colours to the mark for a long time. That's twenty-five yeah. contributions. That's a very good year. I think that'd be less than he got last season. That's twenty-five contributions. And you said he'll be player of the year, and he'll get less than he got last season. You've said he's going to win the Golden Boot. So you expect that neither of you said Mo Salah, given he's got a World Cup break, it's time off, and he also is going to be Salah and Mane's minutes. This is what I've been saying about the Erling Haaland shout. Respect the establishment. Mo Salah or got, Harry Kane will win I the I think Mo Salah's been badly disrespected. No, Mo Salah's got to be in the... In yeah, the I mean, Kane's going to be more of a creator. That's a given. And when Haaland is there to score goals, he's going to win the golden boot. 